Hey guys, I want to do a quick follow-up video on the O1 HDS 2102. I'm Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I showed you guys this the other day when I got it, and I've had a chance to tinker with it a little bit. Um, but one of the things that we were asked about in the chat was the bandwidth. How close does it come to its rated bandwidth? Guys, in this video, we're going to take a more in-depth look at our O1 oscilloscope. And we're going to also look at cables, just two things that would affect your oscilloscope and two things that you can determine with an oscilloscope. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to grab a cable here and I have several cables from various places and we're going to hook this up to our signal generator. I'm using the UTG 962, whoa, focus, UTG 962 and we're going to hook this up to channel one and we're going to set our signal to one megahertz and we're going to put this in channel one on our oscilloscope and we'll adjust our oops i don't want timing i don't want trigger level i want time base there we go okay so we're at one megahertz and what i want you to notice is 2.060 voltage peak to peak if this is a 100 megahertz oscilloscope, this should not drop below 1.4 volts peak to peak by the time we get to 100 megahertz. Now, the signal generator is only 60 megahertz, so I cannot drive this to 100 megahertz with the signal generator I have. But we can see what it looks like. Um, what the standard is, is where the roll off of the signal is down 3 dB, minus 3 dB down from the original input signal. That is the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. So being as this is not going to get to 100, but we can still see what it looks like when we get to 60 and you can see the results of what happens as we increase the frequency of our signal and we look at that on the trace here. So as we go, what I'm going to do is roll up the signal and I'm also going to keep the time base adjusted to keep a decent looking trace on the screen. All right. So here we go. We're at one megahertz and I'm going to start to crank this up and look at our, our peak to peak voltage has not significantly changed. It's dropped a little bit. And we're at 32 megahertz. If you look right there and our peak to peak has dropped down to 1.7, 52 megahertz and we're down holding at 1.7 and there's 60 and we're at 1.66 volts peak to peak. So if we do some math and I know you all love to do math, we're going to take 1.66 divided by 2, log 10 times 20 equals, oops, there's a typo, 1.66 divided by 2 equals log times 20 equals, we are down 1.6 dB at 60 megahertz. So that's where we are. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys, and I can't, I, can, I guess I could plot some data points on a graph and extrapolate out the curve and show you all if you cared um, that much. I'm not going to do it because it would make this a very long and tedious video. <clears throat> but you'll notice on the screen, uh, I'm going to roll the frequency back to 1 megahertz, but look at the traces and where they are on the screen, okay? Let me... Let me move those traces up so that the top of the trace is right, right on the line, just touching the line above it. So right there is where we're looking, okay? <clears throat> and this one is about halfway down the lower block. All right, so as I roll the frequency down now, not only will you see the VPP peak to peak voltage go up, but you'll see the trace get bigger. Oops, darn it. 
That would have worked if I was adjusting the horizontal time base. Okay, let's start over. Horizontal. Get that off the screen. All right, now let's try again. And look at how our signal is now above the line. And this one is past half and almost touching that line. We're at 13 megahertz. And there's one. So you can see clearly that the top of the waveform has now risen a good bit above the lines. So that's that attenuation that I was talking about. All right, the second thing I want to show you, and this is the cables. Let me fix the time base on this. Let's get us all the way back up to 60 for this test. Oh my goodness, six, zero, go. There we go. All right, so we're back at 60 megahertz. And you'll notice the same voltage we had before. 1.66, let's call it that. All right, so that's our voltage with cable A. We're gonna disconnect cable A I'm not changing anything else. I'm just literally swapping out cables. This is another cable I have. We're going to hook this guy up to channel 1 on the scope and channel 1 on the signal generator. Whoa! 1.74 volts. 1.78 Let's see it settle down. We'll call it 1.76 at 60 megahertz. So let's calculate the dB on that. We lost we lost 1.61 dB with the other cable, the first cable. So 1.76 divided by 2 equals log 10 times 20. Now we've only lost 1.1 dB. That's just a cable swap. Cables matter. Cables matter a lot. And, you know, you bandwidth. This comes down to bandwidth. It also could be impedance. These cables are not marked what the impedance is. So I'm only assuming that they're 50 ohm impedance. There may be some other factors in here that I don't remember. I don't mark these cables and from whence they came, and I, I think I'm going to have to start doing that. So I have one more cable that I wanted to show you. So let's take cable two off. And I'm going to put a little chart or something on the screen. We'll hook him back up to channel one. One point seven two. So that's about the same as the as the other cable. Let's double check that. 1.72 divided by 2 log 10 times 20. Only lost 1.3 dB on that. So the cables matter. They matter to how much of the signal you can see. And you can imagine as you go up in bandwidth that this becomes more and more of a thing because we're seeing some attenuation in the cable as well, apparently, from what I'm seeing. So that's what I have for today. Um, well, no, I have one other thing I want to show you. So part of it is down here. When I was demoing this in my previous video, I didn't go over the measurements. So we can do measurements from channel one or channel two, and the measurements are on. I already have frequency and peak to peak voltage on, but we can also turn on period, um, amplitude, max and min voltage, as well as mean voltage. And then when we get out of that, you can see we have all those measurements available on the screen. Now one thing this does not do is this does not do the FFT function, so you cannot convert this to a frequency display. This oscilloscope is not um, not that that spiffy, but 
still a pretty jazzy scope. And if we want to save this, we can tell it we want to save it to a file, we can configure what we're saving, so on and so forth. So that's pretty, pretty swank. All right, that's all I got to show you today. Guys, thanks for stopping by and taking a look at this. Hope you got something out of it. Thank you. Have a good one.